You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications button so you're notified for when my next podcast goes live. First British European champion in 52 years. And you're the youngest? Yeah, youngest team to ever win it. Um, and we did it in the most mental way, mm -hmm. competing against guys with multi-million budgets. And we got there through crowdfunding, 100% crowdfunding people chipping in to help us get there. I'd done the first half of the year getting into debt, really. Leading the championship, but I was driving terribly because I was so depressed from the pressure and the stress. My, my, my head was absolutely gone. I was, I was still leading, but I was driving terribly compared to what I can do. And when I was going through a bad play, bad time in the European Championship, even though I was leading, mm -hmm. um, I was in the worst place of my life with depression. It was like, I, was comp I felt completely on my own and my family was struggling as well. I didn't want to burden them with my problems. Boom, we're on. Yes. And today's guest, we've got Chris Ingram. How are you, brother? Really good. Are you? Good, mate. Really good. Really good. New year. Feeling good. Feeling fresh. Back at it. So yourself, one of the youngest I've had on the show. Yeah. First British European rally driving championship. You're the first to win it in 52 years. Yeah. First British European champion in 52 years. And you're the youngest? Yeah. Youngest team to ever win it. Um... And we did it in the most mental way, mm -hmm. competing against guys with multi-million budgets. And we got there through crowdfunding, 100% crowdfunding people chipping in to help us get there. So it was a massive, like, giant killing effort. Yeah, no backing, no funding, which we'll all touch on that. Because I read, I watched one of the things in the BBC documentary, it was like, skint to... Too skint to, 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 to drive. drive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, I don't really know much about rally driving. Obviously, I know the legend which, which was Colin McRae. Yeah. Um, sadly passed away, but I'm, we'll get into it, man, and the root of it and how it functions and how it works and how you get into it. As you know, brother, I always go back to the start with my guests, where you grew up and how it all began. Yeah, so I grew up um, around South Manchester. Um, I was always the smallest, shyest kid. And I didn't really know what I was doing. And then one day, my dad, who is a massive rally fan, uh, used to drive, won quite a lot of stuff in the UK. He took me to watch a rally in the forest in, in Yorkshire. And from that day on, I knew what I wanted to do. I, I knew I wanted to be world champion and, and be a professional rally driver. So your dad was in about it then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. My dad was, a, he was a really talented driver, but he never took it seriously. He was always turning up to rallies with a hangover and yeah, yeah, no dedication. About. Yeah. What about your schooling? Um, I um, because I was small and but you're about what six two six yeah, three. Yeah, I was a small. I got battered all the time. You know, they used to chuck me into playing rugby and stuff. And I just used to get battered, so I hated school. I just always was thinking about rallying. I did well in school and I'm naturally quite educational. Yeah, I come over as a dope, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and I, my focus was always on, on rallying. And yeah, as soon as I got the chance, my dad first got me the chance to drive when I was 15 in a Citroen C1, like your grandma drives to Sainsbury's in. Mm -hmm. um, so I was so lucky that my dad helped me get into it and, you know, driving quad bikes and stuff like that but then my dad um lost his business and we lost pretty much everything so he'd given me that first push thank god but then it was up to me to to drive forward yeah so even with the rally stuff i see a lot of formula one drivers are kind of start off like go-karts and yeah did you go down that route no how does it work how do you start off being a rally driver most of the guys go through go-karting but even that's so expensive for anyone to get into it's a it's a rich man sport, and the funny thing is, my dad got me into it, and then I've um, I've not had any money ever since. I've I've blagged it to get to where I am, pretty much, and just I've got to where I am on talent 
and blagging, I guess. Yeah. Bit of blagging. So how did you, when did you, like, what was your teenage years? Did you still learn how to drive then? Did your dad give you a shot at the car? Or? Yeah, so I was, I won the junior championship. Me and my dad were running the car. We didn't have a clue about mechanics or anything, but we still turned up the car on the back of a trailer and, and won the juniors. Um, and then we got into the British championship um, in a Renault Twingo and we got some support from Renault and some sponsorship and I was lucky to, to carry on and that was sort of the start of thinking I've got a chance of this because I was winning awards and showing my speed and yeah I, I thought I've got to give this everything. Mm -hmm. So when you passed your driving test what happens when when you fill a license? So see when you won the juniors what are you driving then? On the road, yeah. On, on the juniors, what age oh, were you? I was I was um, sixteen when I won the juniors. So what can you drive then? Is it only one liter rally cars? Right. So light, the light mm -hmm. the hair dryers. And how does it no how, power at how all? How many but, like, stages is there? Is it different stages? Or is it so that was like seven rounds around the UK on private land? Right. So really entry level motorsport, and then getting into the British Championship was quite a big step, um, and I just crashed all the time just mm -hmm. have massive crashes dangerous do people die in the juniors no there's no. not been any deaths for a long time in rally in such wood mm -hmm. good yeah so how do you get into the big boys league so um i was doing well as a junior did well in the british championship but there was a lot of politics involved in the what uk do you mean? because my dad was quite a controversial character mm -hmm. if people didn't like him they didn't want me to do well and I missed out on a few thing, a few awards that I should have won. So we went to France and got a lot more support, funnily enough. And then France led to the European Championship, which on my second event, which was the Circuit of Ireland, um, it was probably the turning point in my career where I was beating all these top cars, you know, cars worth hundreds of thousands. Um, I was beating most of them in a Renault Twingo and everyone was like, this is insane just this little twingo bouncing through the hedge it's just I was just driving flat out um, and I won the Colin McRae award on that rally and that led to so so I actually destroyed the car and crashed on that rally but I still won the Colin McRae award um, but I, I destroyed the car and we were out of sponsorship I had no way to continue until one day I got a call from Peugeot UK and they said Chris we've been following you and we want to support you. So I got two years fully funded, mm -hmm. which was a massive opportunity. So what happens then if you get funded? Can you drive every day or is your car insured? What happens? I've never been able to drive apart from when I turn up, wherever that rally is in whatever country, get one day of practice and then I've got to go for it. So I've never been able to practice. Do other people get to practice? Other yeah. drivers? Yeah, yeah. Why? Because they've got the funding. So they've got money Even to go though I, earlier. My, my racing was funding. I didn't have any funding or I didn't have any income myself. Mm -hmm. um, but there's guys I'm competing against now that are driving every week. who are, They've just got millions behind them and that's what I've always been up against. Mm -hmm. So you're basically just not winging it, but you're doing it through just pure talent just yeah, now. Yeah, 100%. But again, if you're sitting here just now, if you keep doing what you're doing in two or three years' time, it will be a different story the success story will be there for a young kid to be winning European Championship against some of the biggest drivers out there yeah. at 26. Shows yeah, yeah. me that there's talent there. But obviously, if you're saying your dad was controversial, controversial, you don't know if people are making or blackballing you then to go and yeah. don't give him anything. So there might be a lot of politics behind the scenes because if somebody's winning European Championships at your age, because rally drivers drive in their 40s and 50s still, do they not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when some of them hit their peak in their 30s. If you're doing this at this age, then maybe somebody's threatened. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm just going, yeah, that yeah. might just be my conspiracy mind. Yeah. Running overdrive. But when you're doing, so when if you go there, how many laps do you get to do for a practice if you go a day before? So um, the, the events, so when I won the European Championship, yeah. there was eight rounds across Europe. I only did a day's practice on one closed road. And then we do the recce for the rally where we drive the route in a road car twice. So um, that's the same for everyone. So is that just driving normal and a yeah, normal car? Yeah, and that's where I make the pace notes with my co-driver. Mm -hmm. Is so that I, like when you see them, 
I don't know if it was Cool Runnings. I watched the bobsleigh one when they're, they're sitting in the bath yeah. and they're watching the turns. Exactly. Do you do that, like get pictures of the turns you're doing or no? We have we watch a lot of videos and there's a lot of different prep. Yeah. But we can only see the road twice in real life before we have to drive flat out down it. How long it does it take you to prep for one event? How how long is one event? Uh, so one ra- the the top rallies, world rallies, European mm. rallies are uh, usually three or four days. Right. Um, split into stages, obviously. How many stages? It depends because some stages can be like thirty five kilometers. Others can be in the city, the, you know, abroad, the closed city centers and have a stage five kilometers around the city. Mm-hmm. So all the events are different and it's all, you know, the services are different, any condition. And that's why for me, it's the best motorsport in the world because it's such an adventure and it's never the same. You look like a Formula One driver. I don't even know what a Formula One driver is, but you've kind of got that Jensen <laughs> button kind of David Coulthard kind of look. You've do you know what I mean? Would you ever, how could you go from, the rally drivers ever go from rally to Formula One? I'll get a lot of hate for this, but I just find it so boring. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the speeds and the risks mm-hmm. and they're obviously pushing the limits, the milliseconds. Yeah. But for me, going round and round the same circuits, week in, week it's out, boring. it's boring. How's... Um, What's the fastest speed you can get up to in a rally car? So because it's more about acceleration and we're going down tight forest yeah. or mountain roads, it's not about top speed. Top speed can be 130. Right. But we don't... I mean, we do get there, but it's more about the 0 to 60. And when you sat in one of these cars, your brain's, your brain's left at the start line. It's that much of a shock. Who's the best in European tour just now? So I won the championship last year, sorry, two years ago. Mm. I wasn't able to compete all of last year because of COVID. And the Russian driver I beat won last year because I wasn't able to defend the title. So that's frustrating. Who's the best in the world? Sebastian Ogier. He's a French driver. He's a seven-time world champion. How old? He's about 36. So quite young as well. Yeah. And do you think you're better than him? I've got to say yes. Fuck I think him. I'm better than most of them, but Fuck him. he's <laughs> he's like But he's got ten years ahead of you. Yeah. You know I, I, I mean? couldn't say I'm better than him. See, I believe I'm better than everybody. I don't know if that's just pure straight ego. Yeah. But you've got to have that self belief and then and the work ethic to I think prove I could it. be as good as him. Yeah. Better than him. Why not? Why not, man? If your dreams don't scare you, they're not big enough. Yeah, yeah. So you should be thinking outside the box and going, do you know what? Fuck him. I'm just going, I'm going to win eight. Yeah, yeah. So I've got, a, he's like my hero. So I've got. Yeah, so you don't want, you want to respect for him. I want him to mentor me as well. So. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't know what's around the corner. Yeah. So when you, do, how did European, how did you get into the European kind of stages? How does that happen from like British, you got to go through British, yeah. European, see like a boxer wins British title, yeah. like Commonwealth or European, and then go on to the world, is that, have you got to go through those stages? A lot of the rich kids have just gone straight to the world. So and how do you get into the world then to just make that Just leap? money. So anybody can buy a car yeah. and just and enter it? Yeah. How much is it to enter? Um, to do, if you're a rich kid, mm-hmm. To go and do the world championship, you could pay three or four million quid and do it tomorrow. But how? So anybody can jo- do it? Yeah. So you don't have like certain times or anything? No. And that's wrong. That's why it's not, it's becoming less of a sport. So it's a free for all. A more, more of a hobby. A, a game for rich people. Yeah. But there's always the cream at the top. Mm-hmm. So when you've done your European championships, I know if you could get flat tyres, it was like 400 quid, or if the motor yeah. broke down, that was you completely out. Yeah, Does yeah. other drivers have like two and three cars spare? Yeah, I mean, you can't change the car during the rally, but the, there's there's one Russian guy who, he destroys cars every week, and his dad will just buy him a new one for 300 grand to go. Uh, he's, and when you're competing against that, I'm, if I crash the car, then I'm finished. Last year, the year when I won the European Championship, I had no money. I was actually getting into debt to try and fund it because I knew I would, at the start of the season, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to become the first Britain in 52 years. 
to win the European Championship and I would never give up on it. I was getting into debt throughout the season, putting more and more stress on me, getting into a bad place with it really. Um, and knowing when you know you sat on the start line, you've got to beat these guys, you've got to risk everything. But if I crash, it's over. It's the most difficult thing to to balance and judge. What's what's the rules for rally driving? Like flat tires, certain times. Because what do they do? Do they depart the car up or start, go from the different starting points where they finished? How's it work? What different times? I know that people are like maybe twenty seconds ahead. Yeah. But so what happens when they say right, that's day one finished? Where do people start from? Like twenty, if you're twenty. So the stages, ahead. the routes are all the same, yeah. and we start from the same place at minute intervals, and you can change your tire. I can change the tire in a minute, so it's a pretty. I was actually uh, I got a puncher on the last event of the last rally when I won the championship, and I had to change the tire before the next guy was coming round the corner. A blind corner, do you know what I mean? So the, there's a lot of risk involved with, with stuff like that. So you like could that. get hit? Yeah. And you, you can overtake get, do not, people, not get radio, Do you not get radioed through to say, look, like no. like Grand Prix, yellow flag comes out, slow down? No, it's all down to us, which is why it's... So have you got to sign like a disclaimer if you die, then it's your fault? Nah. I think they, they think it's your fault anyway. <laughs> but so, it's, it's a mental sport. How can you get disqualified? Um cheating how do people cheat i don't know i don't you can't really like rigging the did the engines get checked yeah you, yeah do you know what i mean to see if there's like yeah certain stuff in and it, in certain, certain parts. countries you know that everyone's cheating yeah. or they'll instead of doing two recce passes which you're allowed they'll be doing 50 what does that mean they're allowed they're driving the route 50 times before we do it in a row car to learn every single corner Obviously, the more you do it, the more it becomes yeah, easier. But you're only allowed to do it twice. So he's, there's no like, you know how you in the Grand Prix a day before they'll have like the. the That's heats when and we stuff. do it. We're only, but we're only allowed to do it twice. So you, when you lost your sponsor, then yeah, going into the European Championships, what were you thinking? I can't give up on it. And that was a two-year deal you had. Yeah, yeah. And that was. And would that have funded you for two years to travel the world? With I could them? have let it ruin my career. Because I'd turned down other sponsorship, I had everything in place with to do it, so I had to take that debt on to do the championship. And when you're a young lad getting into that much debt, and there's no one helping you, you're putting all all of this into your dream, and it could just end. It's a difficult. When place. did they pull the plug on you, the sponsor? About a week before the first rally. See, something's not right about that for me. Yeah, do you think it was maybe planned that? Oh, build these hopes up and then why would somebody pull the plug a week before I think it's all down to money isn't so it so you've got all these wee rich kids man they'll, they'll not like you coming out there and, and winning that and do you know what I mean they're, yeah you don't know uh, for me that's my paranoia and insecurities but that's the way I'd be thinking there's something ain't right yeah someday when I when there's six, money involved there's always something dodgy yeah so how did you push on? Your mum raised funding or your mum set up a Just Given? Yeah, yeah. Um, a crowdfunding page, GoFundMe, crowdfunding. yeah. And so many people chipped in to help help me get to the final two rounds. Mm -hmm. So I, I'd, I'd done the first half of the year getting into debt, really. Leading the championship, but I was driving terribly because I was so depressed from the pressure and the stress. My, my, my head was absolutely gone. I was I was still leading, but I was driving terribly compared to what I can do. So I had going into those last two rallies, the crowdfunding, and it was like a fairy tale at the end because just the way I won the championship, um, I lost, I lost the rally on the last stage. I got a puncher, so I'd lost the title. I thought this is you know it's the end. Of my, what the hell am I going to do? Mm -hmm. I can't. It was horrific. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. It was the worst. I was in a bad place. And what happened? Did not, the guy, other guy not so get a puncher? the other guy got a puncher. And we were stood at the end not knowing who's won the championship because he'd finished second in the rally. I'd finished fourth. I needed to finish third, but he needed to win. And the FIA, you know, the, the head of motorsport, the, pe the same 
organization that runs formula one they didn't even know so it was it was mental and then after half an hour we got the word from the fia that we'd won it and it was just biggest relief ever so you won it and still no sponsor no why why though well covid (laughs) but you would have got a sponsor if that shit never happened last year so i even before this i won the junior championship and i won a hundred grand but I didn't get it. I didn't get the prize money. So there's just been every step of the way there's been these hurdles. Yeah. But that's where the growth is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Imagine and then I got the sponsorship and then COVID hit and then my sponsors have struggled and had to pull out. Again? So that's two sponsors year. pull out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, all my rivals were competing all year. Mm-hmm. So do you think... So how's the mind now? What are you, what are you thinking of at all? So it, I've, I've been getting, well, I'm, I'm on the up big time because I've always had this goal of becoming world champion, no matter what anyone thinks. And that's my goal, but it's so easy to slip off that path. And when I was going through a bad play, bad time in the European Championship, even though I was leading, mm-hmm. um, I was in the worst place of my life with depression. So you just can't, I can't think of how, you know, now I think, what the hell? Mm-hmm. But I thought I was in that bad a place. That I... mm-hmm. So you are leading the European Championships. Yeah. You're leading losing Europe, money. You everyone thought I'm living money. the dream. Yeah. Going out and traveling the world. Meeting all these fit birds and driving 100, you know, expensive rally cars. But really, I was struggling so mm-hmm. much because I thought it was the end. It what was, was your mum and dad saying? Um, they didn't really know. I didn't really mm, tell anyone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So how did you get through that then? <laughs> Difficulty. Yeah. My biggest regret is that I didn't go and get professional help straight away. That's the only regret. Not asking for help. Yeah. And not speaking about it. When did you start opening up about it? Um, <sighs> when COVID started. Because it that hit me again, um, and that I really struggled in the first lockdown. I just lost, I lost my mind. And when I think back to who I was only a year ago, I th- firstly I think, how the hell could I have won the championship in that place? I must be a bloody good driver, mm-hmm. and I must have some hunger deep down to pull myself through. Um, I just can't believe that I was in that place because now I'm back on the track of being so focused to get to where I know I deserve to You've be. You've got to go to these dark places though to yeah. then appreciate life. Oh yeah. Because you're sitting at the top of the tree, you're thinking European champion, all this money's going to come in, all this sponsors and you got fuck all. Yeah. So you've set your target in your mind that this is going to change your life. You've done yeah. it. It never changed your life. If anything, it made your life worse. Yeah. But only person that put yourself in that dark position was you mm. because you never showing gratitude to actually what you are achieving to yeah. the family that you had around you you had so much going for you Yeah. so you've concentrating on worlds I'm going to travel the world I'm going to have more yeah. footbirds I'm going to have money you were concentrating on the wrong thing except for the love of driving Yeah. except for the passion yeah. your mum's raising money for you you've still got a dad you've still got your health because yeah, 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 we yeah. can concentrate on the things we don't have instead yeah. of the things we really do have Yeah. so when you we spoke, I mean there was a lot of other stuff going on Yeah. like my dad was ill I was in a really bad relationship. Um, Toxic? Yeah, really bad. And I had just no money. So, I mean, looking back, it's not that bad. Yeah, but it is as well. You but think when you're in there yeah. and you're blinded by mm-hmm. it all, it can be horrific. Yeah, you think the only option is to take yourself out of the game. 100%. Yeah. How's your I, dad I can't now? believe how bad you can think yeah. it is when you're in that place, but when you get out of it, you realise what you've got. Of course, but yeah. sometimes you need to hit the depths of hell yeah. to realise. Sometimes you actually need to go through the depths of hell to then see the light. And it's yeah, difficult. Yeah. And I always say this shit on the podcast. Like, we all battle. Like, 
people looking for outside think my life is great, I think I'm doing great, but it's, nothing really changes. I just love what I'm doing. I've just found a passion. Yeah. Same as yourself, you love driving. Obviously more difficult for you because you need to raise funds to then travel the world. You've got your sights on being world champion. Yeah. But then you all look back in a few months from now, you actually laugh and go, fucking stay hours in then. I know. Do you know what I mean? Because you, you might not have been sitting here. Yeah. yeah. Just because you hurt a wobbler with your missus and your dad was not well. That's yeah. all part and parcel of life. 100%. You could have won the World Championship, that shit could still happen and you could have still tried to top yourself. Yeah. I always use Tyson Fury as prime example. Yeah. Won all the belts, won all the money and the big man ends up fucking depressed, the biggest depression of his life. 100%. Because yeah. all that stuff that we concentrate on, we think that's what's going to fulfill us. We realise once we get it, that's not what it's about. It's about enjoying the journey. This is enjoy the stresses of trying to get sponsors. Enjoy yeah. the stresses. You you clearly work better when you're under pressure. Yeah. Maybe if you had all the sponsors, you wouldn't drive as well because your life's in the line. Yeah, yeah. So if you crashed in the European Championships, you were fucked. Yeah. And I just couldn't see a life without me being a rally driver because I'd neglected my personal life so much. I didn't know who I was outside of rallying. Did that affect your relationship? Yeah, massively. Or was it already fucked? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's hard to say. You know, Is it? Yeah. But that's over, you've got over it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, concentrate on you. 100%. Do you know what I mean? Fuck them. They're nothing, some can be nothing but a hassle when you've got a dream. Yeah. Because what happens is you stop working on your dream and it works both ways. So you kind of stop working on yourself and you've had to go through all that shit to realise, wait a minute, I'm still young. Wait, is you now 26? Yeah. Fucking young. Yeah, yeah. Get this year, get things cemented and then go on for the world. So how do you get to the world then? Is it just investment? So yeah. Or I've... do you get a pass? Or So if you've won a European Championship, do you not get a free pass or anything? Nothing like that? Do Does... you get um, money for winning the European? No. What the fuck's the point of competing then? <laughs> because when I get to the top, you know, the guys at the top are earning millions. And I'm not in it for the money. Yeah, but we are in that at some, sort, at some degree. Like, this is a business now I've created. Yeah. So part of me, when the money starts coming in, you start going, oh, wait a minute, I can make more. It's yeah. like, you always want to progress. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And you want to have a career doing what you absolutely love. Love and getting paid shitloads for it. It's okay to make money. Yeah. It's yeah. just how you do it when you make it. Yeah. What you're doing with it. If you're hundreds of hookers and hundreds of cocaine, you know what I mean? That is up. <laughs> just depends what route you go with it. Money's an energy currency. Yeah. How you're spending it and what you're doing with it will show the true character, I believe, of a human being. Yeah, yeah. But it's all kind of part of I don't. I think if you chase it as much, you'll not receive it. If you're open to just doing what you love, all that shit comes with the territory. So for you trying to get into the world, how, what do you need to do now? So I'm at, I've actually created a company as myself and right. I'm selling shares in my future earnings. So I plan to raise the investments to get into the world championship because I won't get a chance at the moment, even though I won the European championship because I've never done the world championship. So the sport's just not tiered for talent. It's all about money, but I want to prove them wrong. I want to get this chance, get the investment to, to do two years in WRC two. How much does that cost? 300 grand a year and that's so over half a mil for two years yeah yeah what's the return if you won there's no prize money but what is it then but if i get what's the, what the top earners get so sebastian oj world champion it'll be on 10 million a year probably so all right though isn't it even the guys finishing fifth or sixth will be on so a top couple 10, of mil. so a top 10s millionaires sponsors they're Mostly, getting a wage yeah. plus the expenses are covered exactly yeah do you believe all, you're a top 10 driver? Oh, without a doubt. I believe that I'm able to Number fight one. when I get the chance. So how do you get the funding? I've ne I've won all these titles and I've, I've shown 10% of my true ability so far because I can't afford to crash. Mm -hmm. When I get this chance with a top team and a top car and I can go balls out, I just need that chance to show what I can do. I don't want to say I'm better than any of these guys. I just want to show how good I am. And you will, though. Yeah. And what, how, when, when does the world champion start again? 
So yep. it's, it actually starts next week in Monte Carlo. So you've missed this one? I've missed it, yeah. How many drivers are in each championships? So there's, um, there's 14 rallies and in WRC2, you'd ha- you have to do seven. So you choose seven of the 14. I'm going to start in Croatia in April. So I'm trying to raise the funding to go for it in April. So what happens then? So so you don't do the 14, just the seven? Yeah. So what if like, number one driver picks do you get to see what other drivers pick no so it's quite tactical i'd imagine though somebody would have a look look poll or some sort of inside information to say right the number one driver's driving here so we'll drive the other seven that he's not driving yeah would maybe. that make a difference so for me i don't think I, I think i'll win it mm-hmm. i'll i want to win wrc2 and then if I do that, I'll get into WRC one, w, you know, the the top tier. Um, because nobody nobody will have done it, and I, I won't be able to be ignored by these top teams. So nobody's won British European world. No, no one. No one. What's Colin McRae won? Just that he's won the world once, twice, once. Yeah. Um, Colin McRae never did. He never. He went straight to world championship really young, because he. Back then, the sport was in such a good place. There was Subaru. There was all this mm-hmm. big sponsors. It was it was massive, yeah. and it needs to get back there. And one of my dreams is to get it back in the public eye. Is there any British drivers? And yeah, there's um, a Welsh driver called Elvin Evans who almost won it. The world. Yeah. How old? Is he? But he, he crashed on the last day. How old? Um, he's thirty three. So you're the youngest Brit then. Involved, yeah. It's a fucked up sport, that. Eh? <laughs> but if you love something, there's no, passion. there's no structure at all, and it's frustrating. But it's the best sport in, on the planet. How many drivers in each championship? Um, twenty odd. So, but what if you say it's money and say like thirty, forty wanted? Then would they just pick obviously people that's through any through any amount of people can do it. You could have a hundred. Can you? Yeah. So like, um, amongst so if, all I had, the... so if I had money and funding, yeah. I could join the World Championships this year? Yeah. No way. You need to get an international license. You, you'll, you'll need to do a few British rallies to get an international license. But you could you could do it. I think we've just given people ideas. You'll see every <laughs> time that you see all the old gangsters driving these championships <laughs> next year. It's mad. See, I don't know much about it. Obviously, yeah. I know Colin McRae because we used to play the PlayStation in the nineties. Yeah. It was Colin McRae. I don't know if he had his own games, but rally games and they, they were. It was then thing. Rally driving used to go to like the bowling, and it was all the rally machines used to play, and that's how I for remember that then. And I used to always remember Colin McRae. Yeah, that was a standout name. Yeah, I don't yeah. Know if yeah. it was because he was Scottish, and I think I don't know if it was a Swedish guy as well back then, but. It's, in, it's an interesting sport. Sadly, because Colin McRae and Richard Burns passed away like 15 years ago, the interest sort of died. In Britain? And then Formula One shot up with Hamilton. Mm-hmm. And there's no one there now that's that's getting the attention of the British public. Yeah. So you, I, that's you, what I need to you do. You need to do the blueprint and the new blueprint exactly. to show people. That's what I will do, given the chance. So this is your chance then, so you're getting back involved in April? Yeah. So what do you do now? So we see you're driving around the streets of Manchester do you ever go through red lights or shit do you ever bomb it <laughs> when, when I was like 14 I used to nick my mum's car and mm-hmm. she'd go joyriding but I, I'm pretty careful now I've, I've I've polished myself up so do you never get the urge though to be sitting at the traffic lights and rev the engine and sitting next to a car Sometimes. so if you if I was to give you that full focus yeah say I was in a Ferrari who would win obviously me would you yeah. Why? I've, I need to take you for a spin down the lanes, probably. Yeah, let's go. Fuck it. <laughs> I've had... Everyone says to me, oh, I'm a be- better, I'm a better driver than you. They'd how, end up, how close is it? How, how if, much... if you took us down the country, yeah. like some, they'd end up killing themselves. Yeah. Because I just, that's my thing. I just can feel everything. So how close is it to like curbs and poles and bo- Is it inches apart? I'll just go straight over them. Do you? <laughs> Is it, but how, so, I know what the car can say. So see, we're, I'm going round this corner. See, I'm coming round the corner here. Do I come round this side of the corner or do I go this side? 
just throw it yeah. side flat out sideways through it and you learn how to do that at a young age yeah yeah i'd say a lot of it is just natural which is crazy from but, your dad though yeah 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 sliding quad bikes around and stuff like that but a lot of it's just instincts i'm sure like like you have these boxes and you've either got it or you've not some people have, everybody's got talent yeah but then it's a dedication and the craft that even cause people always say about ronnie o'sullivan the snooker player i actually read something a couple of days ago he was practicing for 14 15 hours when he was 9 10 years old yeah so as much as it's talent they've created that talent they've created that genius yeah in yeah. them to be the best so you think you could be the best if you get the funding and be allowed to train every day is there anywhere in the uk you can train or do you just go to hit the back roads so um that's what i used to do uh we used to just find farmers with private roads and private forests mm -hmm. for practice that's that's the only way but oh, oh shit I'll, what was gonna say then you'll have to crop this bit there you go fucking hell um mine's just gone blank that's okay about the when you were driving around farms and shit and finding private roads yeah yeah fucking hell um sorry pal that's all right well, well, we just, we just keep going though oh fuck i had something really good so mine's just gone dead do you think it's going all right good it's a journey mate this is what i'm saying is when people do these interviews they don't know i've gone like from back to start good all over that's the place, good but because people will take an interest yeah i don't know fuck all about it so I'm asking questions off the cuff and you, because you already know the answers, I don't, I'm just interested in how it fucking works. Yeah. And so will other people. I'd say like, there's one thing being a fast driver and Colin McRae was the fastest you can get. He was absolutely flat out mental. But I'd say my biggest strength is I'm actually a genius because I know exactly how much I need to push. Um, because of all my crashes in my early career, I found the limit and I can, I, ju I, I know the limit so well that I can, I can play with it and I know the risks. Is that like a, like a, not like, like a thing, like a mind, like a calculated mind? Yeah. Like, um, I won the championship from being calculated 100% yeah. and just know it. I knew when my rivals were going to break the cars and if they were going to get a puncher or they were going to make a mistake. I just knew and I knew exactly what I had to so do. So see when you're driving, you have, what's your co-pilot called? Ross. And with the, so he, does he sit there with the information and you've got, a, have you got an earpiece or anything? In? Yeah, yeah. So we've got a headset in the helmet mm -hmm. and he's given me all of this. Could you do that with your eyes closed? Obviously, it's, you know what I mean, but yeah. you, see, you closed your eyes and drove at a small, a lesser pace. Exactly. Could you do that? 100%, yeah. The the notes, it's like drawing a map of the road in my mind. So it's... Photographic memory kind of thing? Yeah, but the only thing I'm reacting to is surface changes, rocks, you know, all the, the finite details. As I've seen a few spectators nearly getting hit. Yeah. I've seen some of the blooper videos when the, the, the car was skidding around the corner and the, the big guy stood behind the pole and the car fucked the pole. Yeah, yeah. There's some mental video. Uh, you, tires you, and shit coming off. Yeah. So if you broke, so once you get your funding, your backing, yeah. then that's you, pressure off. And yeah. You can, you can get focused. Where is it worldwide or is it just European? Worldwide. Where's the world? Is that American shit as well? So there's around in Chile, Japan, uh, Kenya, as well as all over Europe. There? It's massive in like Argentina and Port. Where's the biggest in the world, the most support? Portugal, I think. There's a million people went to watch Rally Portugal. And then we did, there's Eastern European rallies where I'll be competing against the guy for the win. And he's, he's like one of the most famous people in the country. It's mad, but I, I can walk from Manchester and nobody knows who I am. Yeah. Is it podium finishes? Like first, second, third? Yeah, yeah. And did you get a trophy? Yeah. And you got trophies in? Oh, yeah. Fuck the money in it, just get your trophies. <laughs> I've, that's all I've got. Mm -hmm. I've just got my trophies everywhere. And so you travel the world with it. Yeah. Where's the best place you've been? 
Um, the most unique place is the Azores. Where's that? Which is in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, right. a volcanic island, and the roads are on the edge of the volcano. And it's just the most insane, insane rally with you know a thousand foot drop into a lake what was the what was the volcano mm-hmm. and you was driving there just flat out and you don't think about it how does the cars get there uh, on a ship for four days and you've got to do that travelling as well no no just fly straight yeah. there <laughs> so it's not just a case of filling the fuel up in the car you've got it shipping, not shipping as well and all that shit it, who you, plans all that for you so um, the teams most it's like arrive and drive now Thank God, because there's so much that goes into it, the prep and everything. All I've got to focus on is getting the sponsorship initially and the prep big time. So I just can't wait to get back on it. And I How feel many like, is on a team? Um, so we've got four or five mechanics, an engineer, the team manager, uh, my co-driver, obviously. So that's all funding for them as well? Yeah. So I cut you off there. What were you going to say? Um but you know the the world rally teams there's hundreds of them and they build a bloody garage and the build formula things. one kind of yeah it's yeah massive money mm-hmm. so it's so much it's not just many sponsors can you have in one car as many as you want so that's not too bad yeah if but you I had get... 400 names on my car from all the people that had chipped in yeah like fucking local pizza shops yeah and shit exactly like that. But you must have done them proud then that they never wasted their money. Yeah, thank God. Do you know what I mean? And you should get, don't ever forget these people when you do hit the big no, time. No, exactly. Do you know what I mean? I'll just say fuckies. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> no. No. It's just, um, yeah, so your plan is to win the World Championship? Yeah, win WRC, the second level, which is Rally 2. I need to win that first. Then hopefully I'll get the chance in WRC to become world champion. So WRC, was it two? WRC two, yeah. WRC one? Yeah, yeah. And number one, obviously, is the cream of the crop. Yeah. Number two is that, what kind of drivers is that? Um, <sighs> Up and coming, amateurs, what? And people who have slipped down because there's only, there's only a limited 10 drives in WRC one. So it's top 10? So there's people who deserve to be in WRC one, but because there's people in WRC1 that have paid to be there, they've taken up those seats. Mm-hmm. So it's basically all money. But there must be talent there as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's not just a case of I'm going to pay this money. There must be some sort of talent. Exactly, yeah. Do you ever do you have drivers ever went from world champion level to then Formula One? Um, Sebastian Loeb was the most most successful rally driver ever he won nine world titles and there was talk that he would go into Formula 1 but instead he got into other racing how big is the, the leap what's the difference between rally driving and Formula 1 driving you can't compare it is there no comparison no I mean it's complete it's like could a, a Formula 1 driver come in and nah, compete in the world championship no straight chance. away though a, a lot of them will be thinking I beg to differ Kimi Raikkonen did it and crashed every rally. Did they? Yeah. I don't think they... You can't... It's two different yeah. sports. Yeah. Yeah. It's not even like MMA versus boxing. It's even more... Football, rugby. Yeah, yeah. Just totally different. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy, man. Like, it's funny because every man thinks they can drive. Yeah. So they do because they can maybe hit a 90 or 110 and they think they're big time. Yeah, yeah. But it's... You lose control. We were driving through the snow in Leeds today, and it's so fast. If, if I get into a skid, yeah. do I turn out the skid? That's what I've always been told. Or is that shit? It all depends on front wheel drive, rear wheel drive, four wheel drive. So a rear wheel drive. The, the only way to settle this interview is you need to come for a spin with us this year. I will, and you'll absolutely I shit yourself. I will shake myself, and Dapper laughs all. Um, will tell you because yeah. he absolutely cacked himself it's even in it yeah yeah da- shout out to Dapper man I love Dapper um, was he in your car yeah yeah you need um, you need, you need I to would shake myself with seatbelts and that one though yeah yeah 
but you can't put it I can't eat I'm sat here as a normal guy so I can't tell you how good it is there's nothing it's just the best but is that how you maybe it's the best thrill you'll ever you get have. your adrenaline your adrenaline junkie clearly yeah. so see when you, you weren't driving and that's when you hurt your biggest depression because yeah. maybe you're not getting that dopamine adrenaline, adrenaline kick to the brain where the chemical imbalances were going all over the place because yeah. usually you'll be buzzing. I'd imagine... My focus when I'm driving is like I'm a machine. I've, the, the, I've, I'm, I'm driving so fast and everything slows down like the matrix. And it's just, I can't... I get into this zone. I'm a dope, but I get into this zone when I'm driving and I just can't explain it. Do you feel as if you are the car? Yeah, without a doubt, yeah. You're a part of it. Do you name your car? No, <laughs> nah. should do. But yeah, even the the buzz of the buzz of driving and winning, um, and just doing well, the the traveling and the adventure was a massive part of my life, which I enjoyed, and the meeting people and your team as your family, and when all of that was gone, that was like, what the hell? A part of you had gone. What is life about? Yeah, yeah. Is that when you started questioning everything? Yeah, yeah. And then when did you get help? And you, I can't blame myself because yeah. that is everything to me. Yeah. But even though it's everything, there's still other things there that yeah, that also like yeah. your mum and stuff like that as well. Exactly, like, yeah. Because you're a winner. We, we love to win. Like yeah. Even if I take my kids bowling, I don't let them win. As bad as it is, I need to win. But <laughs> I need to win. I don't know what it is. I just I get I get angry when I don't. Ugh. Yeah, I was with one of my girlfriends and we were playing um, Scrabble or something, and I got I was like I can't lose it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you've got to have that killer mentality. That's what separates the winners from the losers, basically. Yeah, you've got to win. I always believe, no matter what I set my mind to, set my mind to. I believe I'm the biggest and the greatest, no matter what it is, no matter if it's bowling, no matter if it's podcast and yeah. document. I believe that I'm going to bring fire every time. Yeah. You've got to, because if you don't let like, people say, oh, he's, he's arrogant or he's got ego, or, fuck them. But I ain't going to say, I ain't going to bring myself down levels just to make you feel at ease or yeah. make you feel better. I believe I'm the best at what I do. I believe I'm the best at other things that I do. And whatever I set my mind to, I believe that. I'm going to master it. Yeah. It's whether how long I stay at that for to master a craft. Yeah. So yeah. for you, you want to master your craft. What's the oldest rally driver that's kicking about? Still Sebastian Loeb, who's fifties, almost fifty. Yeah. That's nuts. He clearly loves it. Yeah, but when you compare it to Formula One, I'm so young for because rally drivers are. It's all about experience. It's all about knowing these different rallies and the conditions and the that built up over time whereas formula one they can just get on a circuit and learn it and even these young kids can do it now we were like 19 mm -hmm. so it's a different thing so with tires and stuff can you use as many tires as you want if you get flat tires is it only maximum 20 odd there's a limit to like 20 per what, rally. if you're driving in snow and stuff yeah do you use studded tires studs built into the rubber What's Which your favourite course? Um, I, look, I, don't, I don't even have one. No, what's They're your favourite condition to drive in? Any. Ice, snow. Yeah. Can you drive on ice? Is yeah. It, or does the rally ever get, it's too windy or it's too icy? Never. You need to drive? Yeah. It's, it's mad. It's, have you got friends in it? Or is it quite... I thought I had. But if you become a champion, people get fucking... people. The rage. Yeah. People fucking hate it. The more success comes, the more problems, man. It is fucking heavy. And what I've learned to do is use it as fire. Yeah, yeah. So no matter what the hate comes my way, you've just fucked up because I'm just going to even... That fuels me. The success doesn't fuel me. Money doesn't fuel me. It's the fucking haters that fuel me. Yeah, That yeah. genuinely hate fuels me. Like, this year, I'm just going to go levels again. Just... To annoy people. Yeah. I think <laughs> my biggest problem is I've been too nice yeah. and too humble my Fuck whole career. No. Got to be ruthless. To be number one, you yeah. have got to be ruthless. Yeah, yeah. You have got to concentrate on you. This is what I'm learning as well. But I always knew that you're gonna get haters, but when you the bigger you become, fuck me. 
listen, if you won a world title, when you won a world title, you see a whole different, more haters. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong, there's people, like people in Manchester, the support you got to fund you for the European, so people love you. Exactly. Same as myself, I've got more love than anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, it's the hate that, that I will fuel myself to kick on and just yeah. keep proving those people wrong. It's weird, as childish as it is, it's weird, but yeah. So tell me, plans for the future on that then? So I'm like, have you got structure for it? Or are you winging it? I've come so far since I was in that bad place, even though I've not been driving all that stuff. And I just want to keep going. I'm only 20% of the way there. I've just got so much potential I need to fulfill and just focus on myself. Hope I'm sure I'm going to get this chance and then I'm just going to fly. Did you get... Give it everything. Did you ask for help when you were self-harming? Um, I did and I've... I've had so many people to thank, yeah. Did you turn to certain people? And yeah, say and I got um, a really good therapist. And I knew I knew who my real mates were. Mm-hmm. Because there's a phrase that says, you're never alone. But some people, if you reach out to the wrong people, you are alone. Yeah, make you feel lonely. Yeah. So you need to choose your, your yeah. mates. And it's scary but because we're not... not nobody's not everyone is qualified therapists so it's hard if somebody reaches out you think oh, you'll be fine yeah before you know it listen it's too late before you know it, that cuts get deeper before you know it, that rope's hanging from the ceiling yeah it's yeah. difficult because we ain't all therapists we can only lead by example for some people to be a light and understand listen. that's why i thought it's the first time i spoke about it yeah in publicly and i think it's important because there's so many young lads there in the same position without a doubt mm-hmm. People, whatever not yeah. even in sport but um, just in life yeah people looking at you European Championship good looking lad world at his feet exactly that's what I wanted to to, mm-hmm. to get it out really yeah but again fair play to you because it takes balls that's when you know you're in a better place when you're willing to talk about it yeah so that's a good thing so and then you will learn from this you will grow from it you will become stronger yeah once yeah. you watch this as well go do you know what I'm ready because it's nerve wracking putting your shit in the line. Yeah, yeah. Because everybody judges. But people that got my past from five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago. Yeah. As if it's something new, as if I'm hiding the from it. The way I look at it now is I've, I, I've achieved what I have in that place. Fuck. Imagine what I could do when I'm in a good place. Do you exercise? And I wouldn't say I'm in a good place now. Mm-hmm. I'm neutral. Do you exercise? Yeah, every day. Run? Yeah. That balances the mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exercise is key to anything. 100%. Were you offered prescription drugs or anything? Uh, yeah, but I'm not on anything now. I'm 100% and I'm I'm ready to fulfil my, my my dreams and my potential. But this is all part of your story then. Exactly. For being suicidal to then world champion. 100%. And even today, I, I was thinking, is it too early for me to do this interview? Mm-hmm. Because I'm not yet where I want to be at a minimum but I'm going to be there soon, so... You'll be there soon, then you come back on with a world title. Yeah, after making you shit yourself. Yeah, I'll do it. I'm not a pro. I will shit <laughs> myself. I'm a fucking shite bag to shit like that. Like, always, like, even when I go on, like, the theme parks, roller coasters, I'm terrified, but I do it, and I'll try and say, it's fine, it's fine. I just think I'm going to die. So I do. You need to trust me. You know what I mean? I don't trust anyone. Do you know? I always fucking say that. And I, <laughs> I need maybe, I need to start changing that. I need to start stop saying that because need, that's what I'm, yeah. I, I'm, I'm putting out the universe. Do you know what? This year, I'm going to learn how to trust people. But every time I... That's so it's, interesting. It's important, but... You forget that all these people that are supporting you sometimes. Yeah. And you of can't. Course. Yeah. There's so many good people out there. Oh, loads, loads. And I always try and speak to everyone I genuinely do but obviously as everything's grown it becomes more difficult yeah. to give everybody your time because I've got a business to run I've got kids I've got travelling I'm trying to I'm trying to juggle everything I'd love to speak to everyone but sometimes as well you don't want to give the wrong information to somebody yeah. do you know what I mean but this is why we always touch on the mental health it's a difficult time for everyone because nobody knows what the fuck's going on 
but exercise is key. Yeah. Stop fucking lying in your couch, feeling sorry for yourself. Get your ass up. Go a walk around the block. Walk up your stairs. Even getting in for a shower and cleaning yourself. Yeah. Instead of lying about for two days, three days, eating shit. Because it's easy to slip. Slip fast. Like people think 20, 30 years of wrongdoing is going to change over one weekend, one week. It's just constantly consistency. That like people overweight just... Instead of eating a fucking pizza and curry, just cut that out and gradually do it. And I was always one for trying to cut everything out fast together. Yeah. But it's just trying to do one thing at a time and yeah. then constantly adding to it. And you do break the links and the those kind of chains of the past and the trauma, whatever it's had. But for what you've done and came through, you could have been fucking dead. Yeah. And the stupid thing is, I was going and doing these massive things. I... But not thinking about the basics, like you said, not looking after myself well. And that's so important. You've got to have those foundations. Mm -hmm. It was like, I was compl I felt completely on my own and my family was struggling as well. I didn't want to burden them with my problems. Um, and I should have got, I should have got professional help. Caesar says and done yeah. that because we've become ashamed. We've become embarrassed. We've yeah. become too proud to say, listen, I'm struggling. I'm really struggling and that's for anybody watching it struggling and it, it says it, they ain't alone. Everybody's battling, but it's easy for us to talk about it because we're out of darkness. Yeah, yeah. It's easy now because I'm always talking about my addictions and this and that. Sometimes I feel as if I'm fucking talking about it too much, but I might get somebody just watching this new pod, the podcast for the first time that's coming on and going, wait a minute, that can help. That You ain't alone. People ain't alone. It's like, we're too, we are too proud for many years. Nobody knew I had many addictions. Nobody knew. I had it well. I was yeah. always laughing and joking. I always made people laugh. When really I was just fucking screaming out for help. Yeah, yeah. And then when you start distance yourself from the certain things that are destroying your life, you realise, wait a minute, I can have a great life here. And then when you actually start changing all your energy and start getting rid of all the negative shit. But it doesn't even matter that you could win the world title and you could still hope have those thoughts sitting alone. Yeah. You could, they, they will creep back. Mm. You will, some sort of even a, a a song or some smell can trigger that emotion and you'll think, fuck me, that was that dark place I was in. So it, it will always be in your mind oh, yeah, that definitely. you were willing to die because you thought your life was falling apart. Yeah. When really it was just all falling together because mm. what that will do is make you stronger. Yeah, without Make you fucking stronger. And then when you, you, you crash or you, you think you've lost pole position, you'll be thinking, you know what, I'm fucking living. Do you know what I mean? Stop yeah. feeling sorry for yourself. I'm, I'm here. I'm doing it. I'm young. These guys are in their 30s. They're 10 years ahead of me. So I ain't going to feel bad. You know what? Tomorrow I'm just going to fucking zoom right by them. Yeah. With me in your head thinking, that cunt from anything goes is fucking, <laughs> he's giving me the tools and techniques to take over. You will be world t champion. Yeah. Million percent. Yeah. So you will. And then, it's all down Ogier to you. Yeah, he is. He's going to retire soon. Is he? And then, I need to prove myself and try and get him to mentor me. How do you do that? So, for anybody watching that's maybe got money, maybe it's got an interest in it, what if somebody wanted to invest in you or sponsor you, what would they do? You can get in touch with me on any social media on my website, however, mm -hmm. um, and be a part of it because I'm going to get to the top. I need support initially to do the World Championship but I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna I don't I'm I'm too humble I don't like to say I'm gonna but I am I, I'm hundred percent believe that I'm the best young driver out there and that I deserve to be there and I'm gonna show my full my full talent and show everyone what I can do. Mm -hmm. So people can contact you and what do they have? Do they have like their their name at the side of the car? Do they get? We can do anything. Mm -hmm. We can have rides in the car. We can do events branding opportunities it's on bt sport itv to hundreds of millions of people mm -hmm. the world championship so they're getting to promote their business yeah and hopefully as soon as i can get there my profile is going to grow as well my social media is going to grow and yeah it's just all business is it and the, the, the more events you win the more your name gets out there even been on this podcast will enhance your name Definitely. It will enhance your story and people will be intrigued because now I'll be keeping an eye out on 
rally scores and rally championships I'll be coming to one of the events there's hot girls there I'm there <sighs> Do you know what I mean? You won't believe some. I'll be events. fucking driving rally cars. I'll be taking your position in. I put my <laughs> mind to a smoke once I complete this podcast game. I need uh, someone to come and take all the girls off me. Honestly, uh, you know he hit us up. You, you can come number, do that. I mean? Don't know. I think I'm, I'm past that now. But I'm, if they're in their thirties, mate, mature, I'm looking to settle down. I this like, is a year I'm going to settle I like down. Older women, so. so it is. This is a year I'm settling down. You mark my words. I need to settle down. I need to stop being a. Pimp. You don't. I don't know, man. I, I just feel as if I want to enjoy the finer things in life now. Like, business is good. I'm doing good. But I've nobody to share it with. Mm. And I'm in a place now where I feel as if I can. I feel as if I can go nice holidays. I feel as if I can do nice things. I, never, I was never in that position. I was always tapping money to maybe go for a nice meal and pretending. Now I don't need to pretend. So maybe, but again, I think I said that last year as well. Might just be one of those guys that never fucking settled down. Just keep living the high life. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rally driving. He's still that. too young, I reckon. I oh, know. Grey hair's coming on thick and fast. I'm not dying it this year. Had a bad habit of dying it. Did you? A couple of times. <laughs> I just tell people it was the lighting. <laughs> Different lighting. The fucking idiots believe that. Nah, some people. I always get stuck for it. Ah, I'm growing all gracefully this time because I'm always talking about everything's within. So why am I dying my hair? That's ego. I think it looks mint. That's ego. Not yeah, mint. yeah. So, yeah. So, world ta- ta- title then. You're in a good place. Yeah. Good. What are you doing differently daily routine wise? <sighs> Working out every day once minimum. Uh, one strength session, one cardio minimum. And just, just the basics, eating well and getting up early, keeping in touch with the good people around me, which but, is hard in lockdown. Yeah. How are you? I've got a mega coach now, Rick Moylan. He's Who's a he? boxing coach and he's um, toughening me up a bit. Are you doing boxing? I'm starting, yeah. Anything, anything to move? Yeah, stimulates your mind the natural chemicals serotonin endorphins dopamine just to feel good I remember after a workout you will drop again after an hour two hours but just for that certain sorry I just rifted there just for that certain period of any, any, uh, getting out there and moving I yeah. hate I don't like the gym I don't like running but I need to I do it or else I would I would balloon up yeah. but my weight and every podcast my weight's different Honestly, I've done 150 podcasts and my weight goes up and down each fucking podcast. It just depends what I eat. If I eat a bit of bread, my face just fattens up. <laughs> Honestly, throw in a couple of Snickers. But you're doing amazing. You're doing amazing, especially with sitting James. here, young age. Try to top yourself, brother, to then they'll go in world title. So that takes massive courage. That's a total U turn. I don't know if 180, I would say. I don't know why people say 360. Why do people say 360? If you're coming out of that place, people say you've took a 360. Is that not going to back round to your that place again? So yeah. I'm going to say you've done a 180 yeah, yeah. and you've went the other way, but that will make you stronger. So when you do hit the obstacles, because to be world title, to win the world championships, you want to go through some amount of shit, yeah. some amount of problems, more pressure. That's where you can't break. That's what separates the greats from the good. Because... The pressure they can handle. You look at your like your Pete Sambrises, your Ronnie O'Sullivan's, yeah. your top football players, or rugby players, basketball players. It's those split seconds, those inches, those little moments that separate them and win titles than the ones who crumble. Yeah, because everybody crumbles under pressure. But and there's like, there's so many guys in sport that haven't had that and they've been handed these chances, but they're never gonna have that hunger. Because they've never been through it. Yeah. And I think I've... But my my hunger's always been there. This has only given me more fire. When are you 27? Uh, July. So you'll have, you'll be already have, have a couple of races before then? Yeah, yeah. So when does it finish? When's the last race? So the last one is Spain in November. So if you pick seven... Yeah. And somebody else picks seven, what happens if somebody picks the first seven? If they got to then wait to the last race to see if they've won? Or would everybody try and race the last race? So they race? calculate all the points at the same time. Um, 
you know, if I did the first seven and won the first seven, I've won it. So it depends. It's complicated. Yeah, but with the majority of the drivers always last drive the last race, so they know what they have to drive for. Not necessarily. No. Nah. It's quite. It's quite tactical. Is that because there's a lot of Scandinavian drivers? So you know for a fact they'll do all those events in Scandinavia. I might have to go and do a, one or two of them and beat them. So I know that they're on a loss. Do there. you know the tracks? No, not at all. Never been to any of them. So, but the the people get a heads up. Let's use the ones in Scandinavia. Would they know? Yeah. We're racing this year. We can I'll drive be racing here for on six months. Exactly. I'll be racing against them on their home roads, At which they've been driving on yeah. for years. So it's it's like coming racing me around Manchester. Mm -hmm. You know all the streets. They've exactly. Got a clue. So it's a massive challenge ahead. You going for it though? Yeah. Fair play to you, brother. I think um, I was like, I just can't believe how far I came as that person. And now I feel like I hit the rock bottom and I'm, I'm reinventing myself. I'm only at the start, but I can create whoever I want to be now. Yeah, you believe in yourself now? I always have the, I always have. But just these, these things, not even doubts, but just the loneliness and these bad feelings crept in. How long were you having those feelings? I would say it was creeping in ever since school, yeah. ever since I was a kid. So you always had them there? Yeah, just... I think because of like not having a good time in school, um, my mum and dad struggling a lot. I never wanted to tell anyone my problems or, you know, put my problems, give my mum and dad more problems. And I think um, that shaped it. Mm -hmm. Just a build up. So people might think it just happens overnight, but it's just a build up from your teenage years to then your dad not well, the missus falling out, the missus. Yeah. Not getting funding. It's yeah. Just, it just all piles on you. Yeah. And then you think, fuck me, do you know what? It's too much. Yeah. But then. You've clearly, if you want, and not having the right support system in place of good mates you can mm -hmm. talk to about anything. That's Got so me, important, brother. isn't it? Got me. So I only want to hear from you when you're winning titles, mate. I want to hear from you on your phone. Like, I've just fucking won it. I'm going to my boy there. <laughs> well done, son. But you've you got what you needed out of it. You've learnt from it because clearly you're still here, breathing. So you're here for a reason. Whether that's to win world titles, I don't know. It's down to you. How far you want to go? I believe you won world. You will win a world title. Yeah. I'm always right. I'm always right, people. Um, I've had many world champions on here, fighters, whatever. The funding's the only thing stopping me. If I get the funding, I could do anything. Yeah, and you will get that. So, how? So, before we finish up. What's the, the main objective then this year for you? So I want to win my first world title in the second level. Right. Um, but most importantly, I want to just enjoy life. Just be happy about yeah. it. But you look happy. Yeah. You look happy. Not as if you've got a smile on your face where you're I just wanna, enjoying life. Yeah. So no matter if you get funding or not, just understand that life does go on. Exactly. You're still young. You can always go again. I've got so long. Yeah. And even if it, even if I don't become world champion and don't get this chance, I could do something else. Mm -hmm. So I, I think it was good. It was thanks so much for for inviting us on. I, I, I really thought it was important to tell De the young definitely. lads. Definitely. For anybody that's watching, struggling just now. What advice would you have for them? For people looking at you and like I said earlier in the podcast, you would probably think you've got a great life. Yeah. And it just show, it goes to show that appearance doesn't mean fuck all. It's the ones with the big smiles in their face. It's the ones that are hiding the most, I believe. Yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm speaking from experience there as well. But for anybody that's struggling, what advice would you give for them? Get professional help. There's a lot, you know, this, like on your podcast especially, there's been so many blokes who you know, big tough blokes that can do anything, but 
no you can't do it all on your own and you need you need people good people around you and you if you're in a bad place you need to reach out yeah and get professional help because it can change your life on an in a matter of a few sessions yeah just at, honestly just admitting that you're not feeling great yeah just admitting you're having mental health issues that's the change your life changes in an instant you can work on yourself to keep better on yourself but an instant that moment to say right yeah I'm going to get help. And you need to be a bit humble to do that. Yeah. We've all got too much pride. We'll walk yeah. about with a swagger and just pretend. But it's a weird time for everybody and people are struggling, but people do change. People make better yeah. choices in life. It just takes time. Just understand that you can make choices. You yeah, can make yeah. better choices and you can open up and just admitting, right, even admitting to yourself that you're struggling is a turning point in your life. Don't need to admit it to everybody else or somebody. You can admit it to yourself yeah. and work on yourself. I think everybody knows the answers to things that they need to change in life to yeah, better yeah, themselves. Right. Whether it's overeating, over drinking or taking drugs or whatever shit it is you're doing, you know deep down inside that this ain't making me feel great. Just ask yourself the question, what's enhancing you and what's not? And I think if you actually become honest with yourself and actually sit with yourself for a couple of hours and gather your own thoughts... Then you can kind of figure out yourself where you're going wrong in life. Yeah. But some people do get so lost that they crash into the wall and they don't know where the fuck's went wrong. But when you actually look at all the shit they've done maybe over a 10, 20, 30 year period, it just all comes to a head. Comes into such a mess yeah. that you can't unravel it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But Chrissy boy, for coming Cheers, on the day, brother. Listen, I genuinely mean it. You will be world champion. Thanks for coming on, sharing Cheers, your story. Thanks so much, pal. I mean that, brother. And you're doing amazing. It's good to see you smiling, happy, plans for the future. And let's go part two when you get that world title. Top man. Cheers, Cheers James. Thanks a lot. Check out more of my podcasts on the right and be sure to like, share and comment your thoughts on this week's podcast. Thank you.